Hello everyone. Welcome to all the students and viewers on this subtopic I have today is uh, scenario based. Scenario based questions are more appealing and more informative, right? Because they will have so many sub questions that you can uh, discuss and you can go into the depth of the question. So that's why Scenario based questions are more appealing and more in depth than compared to any MCQ or anything. So, anything that is with the image always carries the more weightage. Right? All right. So, let's watch uh, some scenario based questions. We'll go to the questions. Before that, I would like to welcome you all for this Unacademy platform. You are on this the finest learning platform that you can get for NEET PG and other competitive exams and it is an academy and I'm Dr. Rohini Wyan and you are watching anatomy subtopic scenario based questions okay all right so here is my little introduction I have an MD from Kasturba Medical College from Mangalore and it belongs to Manipal Academy of Higher Education and uh, this College Manipal and Mangalore KMC has one of the finest anatomy museums. So anatomy museum has given me a lot of knowledge in the subject anatomy that has also inspired me to do my PG in anatomy. And other than that, I also have a PhD from Savita University, Chennai. And this is located in the Tamil Nadu and also MT and MBA in hospital administration from Georgia University, USA. All right, so with all these credentials, let me just move ahead and give you a little more information. With the topic as such, we have um, a young cyclist is involved in a road traffic collision. Okay, he's a young cyclist and he's involved in a road accident. He is complaining of pain in his right shoulder region. So this is the scenario based question. So you have to have a lot of imaginative power. So you should, uh, you know, imagine yourself as if you are riding the cycle and you have to imagine all this and only then come to the conclusion. Before that, you need to pick those key words that are in the question and then come to the conclusion. What could be the cause of this? All right, so we have a cyclist who is involved in road traffic collusion and he is complaining of pain in his right shoulder. Such things you have to highlight or underline. And then, let me just take a different color. Okay, he is unable to abduct. Remember, abduct his arm, the right side arm. And also, the lateral rotation has become very weak. Okay, he has decreased sensation over the upper outer Deltoid. So you have to also remember the sensory supply. Okay, what gone wrong to have this loss of sensation? And which nerve do you think has been damaged? So which nerve? So you have to remember all this pain in the right shoulder region. So they have not talked anything about the shaft region or the elbow region. It's only the shoulder region. So concentrate only on the shoulder region. Remember the humerus has an anatomical neck and a surgical neck. Okay, if, you, if I draw the humerus here, this is the shoulder joint. It has an anatomical neck here to which the capsule of the shoulder joint is attached. Okay. And there is a surgical neck which is related to the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve can easily get damaged whenever there is a dislocation of the shoulder joint. And axillary nerve supplies two muscles. One is the deltoid. The other one is the teres minor. So these two are the muscles that it supplies. So when it supplies these two muscles and also the skin in the regimental badge area, that is around this area where the badge is used with all these, um, you know, um, military and uh, <clears throat> army people whenever they get a badge. So they use that badge on that area. So that area is supplied by the axillary nerve. All right. So now here, this is the axillary nerve, the surgical neck and on the posterior aspect, also you have some nerve 
related that is radial nerve and here the medial epicondyle also you can see a nerve related so you have three nerves important nerves related to the bone which are they one is axillary then the radial then the last one is the ulnar nerve so all these three things you have to remember and exactly where they are related to all right let's go to the actual thing which nerve has the damage so obviously we are talking about the axillary nerve what is the root value of axillary axillary has the root value c5 c6 okay and this is one of the worst hit nerves whenever there is a condition called herb's palsy you must have heard of herb's palsy which is the injury to the upper trunk upper trunk so all those nerves that have the root value or the roots that is you know derived from this upper trunk whatever nerves are emerged they are all going to be damaged so including the axillary nerve that has c5 c6 in its root value so let's go and see little more information so here you can see the deltoid atrophy see the contour of the deltoid this is the contour of the deltoid even in the x ray also you can make out the contour of the deltoid would be lost and here you can see a atrophy of the muscle see the contour is lost so you can see the bony projection also you can see the greater you know tubercle very clearly it becomes very prominent greater tubercle and then what are the other things that you should remember when it comes to the sensory so this is the sensory side picture you can see supraclavicular nerve would supply this region i hope the diagram of this is very clear there is supraclavicular this region above the clavicle and look at the axillary that is on the lower portion the regimental badge area so just above that if it would have been it would have been supraclavicular nerve that has the root value c5 c6 and c7 all right so here what nerve supplies the skin you should remember axillary has both motor and the sensory part the sensory part is from the superior lateral cutaneous nerve i don't know how many times you have gone through this particular name and uh, it is very important you learn the name of the cutaneous branch also it is superior lateral cutaneous nerve that is what supplies this area let me just shade that area for you so that is where the deltoid attachment also you can see so the lower portion of the deltoid okay so now here you can see on the lateral aspect radial nerve radial nerve near the lateral epicondyle it divides actually into the deep and the superficial branch okay superficially sensory the radial goes down and here on the medial side you can see intercostal brachial nerve that is again cutaneous nerve and this is the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve and this one is very important that is musculo cutaneous nerve what happens to the musculo cutaneous after it supplies the arm it comes to the forearm and it becomes the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm very very important okay so now here the sensory of this thenar is by radial the sensory of the ulnar side that is hypothenar is by ulnar and then you have the median nerve also supplying the other structures so to the question if we go back the axillary nerve is what supplies this area of the skin and its root value is c5 c6 and through which branch it supplies it is the superior lateral cutaneous nerve okay next let's go to the next one and see so here we have some information axillary nerve supplies the deltoid teres minor now let's see what is the action of teres minor can anyone guess what is the action of teres minor teres minor has the action of the lateral you know rotation and adduction so this is the action the opposite of the deltoid actually even though the nerve supply is same the opposite of deltoid it is 
deltoid does what action? Deltoid would do the abduction and it will be from 15 to 90 degree abduction. So that is the action of deltoid. But why we don't check the contour of teres minor? Why only the deltoid? Because teres minor is a very small strip of muscle and it is very difficult to um, see it from the superficial surface anatomy. So that's why the deltoid is chosen and by looking at the deltoid fibers, you can easily make out the nerve supply defect. All right, so now that is the important muscle in abduction and it is innervated by axillary nerve and teres minor laterally rotates the arm. That is very important to note. There is medial rotation and lateral rotation. Lateral rotation is not just done by teres minor. Lateral rotation is also done by the other two muscles in the rotator cuff group. Which are they? The supraspinatus and uh, infraspinatus. Okay, plus the teres minor. So that's why these three are together. And what about the other one, which is from the rotator cuff? That is subscapularis. Subscapularis would do medial rotation. Okay, that is very, very important. Subscapularis does medial rotation while the other three will do the lateral rotation. This group is called the rotator cuff group. And this is the only one which is attached to lesser tubercle and all the other three to the greater tubercle. Remember this as sit muscles, S-I-T. Okay. Now out of this, only this one is supplied by axillary. The rest all are supplied by the Nerve to supraspinatus. Nerve to supraspinatus. This knowledge is very important. See, whenever you study about any group of muscles, you should always observe what is their nerve supply, how different is their action. Sometimes even though they are in the same group, their action may not be same. And even the nerve supply may not be same. So it's very important that you notice all this action and the nerve supply. Okay. So let's go to the next one. So always it's better to compare and contrast with the chart. So next question says, a 29-year-old pregnant woman, she presented to the general practitioner, she complained of pain and tingling in the fingers, okay, in her fingers. And questioning what happened, the general practitioner determines that, in fact, it is only the palmar surface, okay. It is only the palmar surface of the thumb and lateral 2.5 fingers. So just imagine the palmar surface of the thumb and the lateral 2.5 fingers. So it is only this much. So this much only 2.5 fingers. And the pain is causing her to wake during the night. So night she is not able to sleep. She has trouble sleeping and she is having difficulty buttoning up her clothes also. So that is what she is having. That means she is not able to flex her fingers. Okay, which one does the finger flexion? All that you have to identify. Now, carpal tunnel syndrome is diagnosed at last. And you have to find out what nerve is affected due to this syndrome. Okay, so now what is carpal tunnel syndrome first of all? Let's go see the carpal tunnel. Now, here there is a ligament that connects the carpals. Now, you have... Uh, Two sets of carpals, there are four and four. You know the names of those carpals. And this side is the pisciform and the hamid. That side is the scaphoid and the triquitrum. So you can see all these, um, you know, uh, carpals are aligned. And in between these two, on the medial side and the lateral side, the scaphoid and the triquitrum, there is a ligament that extends that is called transverse carpal ligament. And this is the retinaculum and underneath the retinaculum you can see the median nerve. And median nerve gives those branches, medial and the lateral branches. And this supplies the thenar muscles and the other three and a half fingers sensory. So this is the sensory supply. Okay, sensory is three and a half. 
So area of pain and numbness is felt in this region and that's the reason she was not able to sleep at night. Alright, so now here there is more explanation on the same. The palmar cutaneous branch actually supplies the central area of the okay, palm where it is superior to the flexor retinaculum. So that middle portion just above the central area of the hand or palm surface is supplied by the Palmar cutaneous branch. So remember the name Palmar. Usually we don't go to remember the names of cutaneous branches, but sometimes it becomes very important. Not all of them, but some of the cutaneous branches we have to remember whenever there is an applied aspect tagged to it. So now roof of the carpal tunnel is in this area and that is supplied by Palmar cutaneous branch. And that is the reason the sensation in the central palm will be preserved. Okay. So now here all other areas are compressed. So now only the middle portion of of palm is spared because it goes above the retinaculum. This goes above the retinaculum and the compression does not happen into this particular branch. So there is no compression on palmar cutaneous branch. But the main median nerve gets compressed. That's why the three and a half fingers are the one which lose the sensation. Okay, next coming to. All right. <coughs> Murli, um, Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. Hi, Murli. And um, nice to see you. A 25 year old. Let's see whether you can answer this question. Okay, a 25 year old man crashed his car. He crashed his car. I don't know why they would uh, give the age of the man. Probably to say that he is an adult. He is not a child. And he was not wearing a seat belt. Okay, and he hit the steering wheel and subsequently he developed a hemothorax. Now what could have happened to develop a hemothorax? Now there should be definitely a hemorrhage, right? So what do you think? Yeah, Murli. A large caliber chest drain was inserted just posterior to the mid-axillary line, the fourth intercostal space. That is something to remember. Now, while rehabilitating, it was noticed that his right scapula, the scapula right side one, protruded. What is protrusion of the scapula? What is retraction of the scapula? There are various movements of the scapula also. There is elevation of the scapula. There is depression of the scapula. There is protrusion and retraction. So protraction is something like a standing out protrusion. And retraction is always like how our scapula is. It is retracted. And it is retraction is stay put to the thoracic cage. It is close to the thoracic cage. It is retracted. Okay, close to thoracic cage. And protrusion happens when? Protrusion happens whenever there is winging or the angle of the scapula stands out like that. That is protruded. So protrusion of the scapula has happened. And exercising with the physiotherapist, they notice that there is a protrusion. So which nerve do you think has been damaged in this case during the insertion of the chest drain? So there is a nerve that runs down. Okay, so there is a nerve that runs down to supply a muscle which is coming from those ribs. So there are eight digitations of this muscle, eight digitations of the muscle. And there is a nerve that comes down from the brachial plexus. It comes from the trunk of the brachial plexus. Very, very important nerve. Anyone who knows what is the name of this nerve, it has the root value C4. Sorry, C5, C6 and C7. Same as the musculocutaneous nerve. Same as musculocutaneous nerve. With all this hint, anybody will tell? 
Yes, it is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior has the nerve supply of long thoracic nerve. Long thoracic nerve has the root value same as the musculocutaneous nerve. All right, so let's see. This is the elevation of the scapula. You just, you know, shrug your shoulders upwards. That is obviously done by the trapezius and that's when the trapezius will pull the scapula upwards. Trapezius has got three set of fibers. There are upper fibers, there are middle fibers and lower fibers. The upper fibers help in elevation. There are different set of fibers will do different action. So elevation of the scapula is done by the upper fibers. Yes, it is from the root and the, it is from the root and the trunk. In some books, you'll see that as branches from the trunk. In some of them, you'll say that it is from the root. You go check which one, but I would always believe that it is from the root, directly from the root. You have long thoracic nerve coming from the roots. Okay, so there is um, there is adduction that is called the retraction. This is the retracted scapula. Okay, who does the retraction? Anybody? Murli, any idea who does the retraction of the scapula? Which fibers will do the retraction? Retraction is done by the trapezius. Which fibers? The middle fibers. And also there are muscles in this border. What is that? That is the rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor. So all this also will help in retraction. Okay, all this will also help in retraction. So this is for retraction or adduction. Yes, correct. Rhomboidus major and minor. Ankusha? No, not Ankusha. Anushka Gupta. Okay, you are also, you were correct, but you deleted it. All right, so there is this boxes muscle. See now, the boxing uh, bean is also shown there. This shows that there is protraction. So which one is the boxes muscle? It is a serratus anterior. So you can see that. And the serratus anterior antagonist is rhomboidus muscle. So antagonist to that is rhomboidus muscle. And uh, you can see the protraction. So you should remember serratus anterior does what? Protraction of the scapula. And opposite retraction is done by rhomboidus. So obviously that is the antagonist. Okay. So there is depression also. Depression is done by the one which are low. That is latissimus dorsi. Okay. There is upward and downward rotation. Rotations you know. There is upward rotation. That is the the scapula, when you do overhead abduction, which one helps? Or when you do the abduction, that is supraspinatus, is the one which does 0 to 15 degree, then deltoid, then the serratus anterior. All this will do upward rotation. And downward rotation is brought about by the other muscles which are on this other side, that is T, 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 T is major, minor and triceps. Okay. All right. Let's move to the next one. So here is the winging of scapula. You can see the spine also. You can see very clearly. This is L, R, R, L. And this side is T, T, T. And here is the thing for your humerus. Humerus is not very pretty, but yeah, looks like humerus though. It does look like humerus, right? Okay, so this is for the trapezius and the deltoid. All right, here will be the supraspinatus, infraspinatus. Next, long thoracic nerve. 
and it supplies the serratus anterior muscle. It protracts and holds the scapula against the thoracic wall because of the negative pressure. It stays put and it doesn't, you know, move away. That's one other reason why it stays put, not just the um, serratus, but there is also contribution from the pressure that is between the thoracic cage and the bone. Now here, next one, a 20-year-old heroine addict, she falls into a deep sleep for about six hours on an armchair, uninterrupted. So obviously, because of the armchair, her arm region or the axilla region could have got, you know, really compressed. So when um, he wakes up, he finds that one of his arms has become very weak when you do the extension. He is not able to do the extension very well where he was not able to do on the wrist and the fingers, the wrist and the fingers region. But again, it depends on what nerve is compressed and what part of the nerve is damaged. Now, there is area of pins and needles on the, on the posterior lateral aspect of the forearm and hand. Which nerve do you think is compressed against the arm of the chair? So remember, posterior lateral side of the arm, forearm and hand is supplied by the superficial branch of radial. <coughs> superficial branch of uh, radial is given at the, given at what? Lateral epicondyle. So that is where it divides into the superficial and deep. The superficial one will go on the lateral side and supply all the posterior lateral aspect of forearm and the hand. But what happens to the deep one? Deep one supplies all the extensor muscles of the forearm. So that's why. So they are very clearly mentioning that it is posterior lateral aspect of the forearm. So you must remember this portion is sensory from the superficial branch of radial. This is a purely sensory branch. It's a purely sensory branch. And then you have to remember all those symptoms of the radial nerve injury. What happens if it is in the axilla? What happens if it is in the spiral groove? The injury in the spiral groove. And what happens if it is posterior to the posterior interosseous nerve? So all this you have to remember. So first one, let's take up what happens in the axilla now. There is weakness, tingling and numbness from the back of the arm to the hand, up to the hand you can feel because the entire stretch is damaged. And here if it happens, injury in the spiral group, this area will be spared. This area will be spared, this much area. Then weakening will start from the brachioradialis. From this area it will start from the brachioradialis side. And it also interferes with the person's ability to bend the wrist. Okay, so you may also see that there is a wrist drop. Because all those forearm extensors are not functioning. That's why there is wrist drop. So wrist drop you must always connect with the nerve injury in the spiral groove. Okay, nerve injury in the spiral group. Of course, there may also be wrist drop in the axilla, but not here. Next one, muscle weakness is seen and also inability to extend the fingers. Okay, that is what happens in this case. All right, next, let's see this one. This is the drop, wrist drop you can identify. And you can also see there is a, Treatment plan, that is, you can treat with the splints. There could not be any surgery required. And you can see that a passive range of motion in all the joints of the wrist and hand and prevention of contractures, including that of the thumb and the index finger is created. And splints, what do they do? They are, the wrist drop can be treated very successfully with these splints. And you can also see that uh, many types of splints have been there. It also depends on one's need. All right. And this is the explanation for the radial nerve. We just know that it is from the posterior cord with the root value. 
C5 to T1 is the root value and it arises from the posterior cord along with the axillary nerve and it runs in the spiral groove along with the vessel. Which vessel is that? Profunda brachii vessel and it is very vulnerable especially when it is in the shaft region. Alright, so with all these things, let's move to some, you know, other slides which has the, my profile. Please see this and also there is some more dedication from my dear students. You can see there is a dedications from the students like orange hat, yellow hat and many things. You can see there is a telegram channel, let's crack need PG and you can join that and you can also see there is iconic and plus you know, um, groups where you can go for an academy plus prep ladder access here and you can go for an academy here and you use the code R-O-H-I-N-I-10, you will be getting 10% discount. And if you have any queries or anything, please message me. You can definitely get answers for all this. It is, again, anatomy with Dr. Ruini. So you please search for this telegram and you can message me. I will be posting more and more questions and queries and lot of image based, you know, MCQs. So with all these, you can get super smart and do message me on this telegram. So join this telegram group, Anatomy with Dr. Ruini. And you can also ask doubts. You can ask doubts there or you can directly message if you don't know. The profile also you can message me and you can also message me using the new telegram group that I have created just for you to answer all your queries from anatomy. And here you, you can clip the question and you can send it to us. We'll answer the questions and you can also see that we have special classes running. Mine is especially on the Wednesdays and look forward to all those Wednesdays where I'm going to take those special classes for you. And the special classes are very interactive compared to the YouTube classes because of their interactive nature. Because you can see the educator and we can see your messages that makes it even more interesting. And you have various other features including the PDF of lecture notes which you can download. And you can also get notification of the classes. And here is how to get the subscription done. And you can also see you can install the Unacademy Learners app and you can go for the special classes. It's very simple steps. Just follow this and join the competitive exam. You can click on from competitive exam. You, it will take you to the Neat PG section where you can access with the new code. You can just type in my code R-O-H-I-N-I-10 and once you type in the code, you are definitely there to be part of the Unacademy classes. So now here you have the Bucks Bounty feature that where you can report any inappropriate content if you find. And also you can subscribe and like for all those classes. And also please do hit a like whenever you are, you know, in the profile. You find the profile. Please start following the profile so that I can make you one of my followers and send you lots and lots of anatomy stuff. And this is the referral code that you can use to unlock and also to get 10% discount. And you can also see there is plus an iconic subscription that you can get. And you can also see the batches that's starting from 18th. It just started from 18th. So you have various batches like this and all this you can check out. And along with that, there is a one month package as well. So there are various packages. This is also available just before your exams to just refresh and be ready for the exam. And this is the 25,000 plus high yield clinical questions are there. You can just check out our question bank and also go for subscriptions. So this four year subscription is very interesting. It is of 60,000 plus subscription and Iconic is 75. So it's going to be really, really interesting. And uh, 48 months, you know, you can go for EMI option also. That is 1250 per month if you have taken plus. And Iconic is 1406. So try this with the code R-O-H-I-N-I-10. So 
try this code and then you should be able to get the discount. Also, you'll be able to access all my free classes. And this is the grantest series that has just started and goes on till 11th of September. So all these dates, please reserve them for the test. All right. So with all this, I'm going to end at this and I'm going to take more of the classes. And this particular um, thing, I'm going to take it in the next class. And here I'm going to just wind up and say good night to you all. And hopefully I'll see you all at 10 o'clock. And I have another session at 10 p.m. Do join this 10 p.m. class with more questions, more of scenario-based questions and more of interaction with you all. Thank you so much for joining.